Hey everyone, today we're looking at one of the oldest machines on Hacked Box called Lame. Lame has two seemingly vulnerable services that if we can exploit them, we can directly get root access without the need for a privilege escalation. So let's check it out. Let's begin with an Nmap scan. As usual, we'll be running a service scan, four threads to speed up the process, scanning all ports and skipping host discovery. I'm also piping the results of this Nmap scan into a file using the T command so we can reference it later if needed. Once we have the results from the port scan, we see that there are a bunch of services running on this box. The most interesting of these services is FTP running on port 21 and SMB running on port 139 and 445. These services are known to be pretty vulnerable and easy to misconfigure, allowing attackers to exploit them and gain access to the target system. Let's start with the FTP service. The file transfer protocol or FTP was introduced in 1971 as a method to transfer files between different systems. Doing a little bit of research on this particular version of FTP, we see that there is an infamous backdoor vulnerability within its source code. If the username contains two specific bytes that translate to a colon and a closing parentheses, basically a smiley face, the service opens up a listener socket on port 6200 through which we should be able to connect and get shell access. I'll link this web page in the description below. Now, there is a Metasploit module for this exploit, but let's try and exploit the service manually. We can use netcat to interact with the service. We specify the username as a smiley face and do the same for the password. According to the source code that we just saw, we should be able to connect to the listener on port 6200 of the target system. However, when we attempt to connect to the port, we don't receive the intended response and the request eventually times out. This might be due to a firewall restriction implemented on the target system. So let's take a step back and look at the SMB service. The server message block or SMB service was developed in 1983 to provide shared access to files and printers across multiple nodes on a network. To learn a little bit more about the service, we can run another Nmap scan with the script scan option or dash SC. The script scan gives us more information such as the exact operating system, a detailed version number, and some domain information. We can use the exact version number to search for a vulnerability that impacts this particular service. ExploitDB shows an interesting username map vulnerability where shell commands can be executed from within the username field. Since the service maps usernames prior to authentication, no authentication is required to exploit this vulnerability. This exploit is also available within the Metasploit framework but I'd recommend trying to execute it manually to understand the process a little better. One way to interact with the SMB service is to use SMB client. We can list out the different shares on the box by using the dash L option and hitting enter whenever asked for a password. All the shares seem pretty standard except for the opt and temp shares. We can also attempt to authenticate without a password by explicitly specifying the dash N option. Let's try and connect to the box without a password initially, and then specify a username injected with shell characters. We can connect without authenticating to the temp share. From here, we can use the logon command to execute a reverse shell that would essentially connect back to our attacker machine. We're also using the no hop command so that the process isn't killed, even if the system sends the process a hang up signal. In a separate pane, we can set up a listener on our desired port using netcat. Once we execute the logon command through the SMB console, the target system should execute the shell command we gave it and connect back to us with a bash shell. Once again, whenever I'm being prompted with a password, I'm just hitting enter. We successfully receive a connection from the target system and can now use commands like who am I or ID to verify that we have root access on the box. To get a slightly better shell, we can use Python's PTY package to spawn a bash shell. From here, we can access the root directory for the root flag 
and search the home directory for a user, in this case, Marcus, to find the user flag. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.